welcome to Smart Living. As you can see, sitting next to me is Danielle Williams. So this is a woman who has been in the Valley for over 20 years. She's been working in radio, television, and she does a lot of stuff when it comes to community resources. She even has her own show about showing people mm -hmm. to connect resources that we have here in the Valley. So we're going to talk about all those things. Plus, one of the things that you probably don't know about Diva Danielle, besides being a comedian, is that she's incredibly frugal with her money. She shops at Goodwill and repurposes a lot of things. One class act. So let's get the show started. Danielle, welcome. Thanks for coming out and having some time to chat with us a little bit about you and, and what's going on. I love it. So for a lot of people who may not know of you in mm -hmm. the Valley, like I know you've been around for a long time, but can you show people a little bit about, you know, your your public career that you've had? My career yes. in the spotlight. Such a deep <laughs> Well, I've been on radio and television, and it's so crazy because a lot of people always want to know, how did you get started? And I had what I like to call the Cinderella Humble Beginnings. I mm -hmm. actually won a radio contest in the little small agricultural town of Salinas, California, back in 2000. And the contest was, be the 19th caller to qualify to go to the 2000 Grammy Awards. Really? Yes. So on so the you did last this. day, yes. So on the <laughs> last day, I was the 19th caller to qualify. I told them flat out, I'm your winner. I'm going to LA. I'm the contest winner. You don't have to look any further. I'm the one. They're like, no, come Monday. We got to pick a winner. We'll draw a name. I says, no. The hair appointment is made. I've got the time <laughs> off from work. I'm your winner. I'm going to LA. So, so long story short, I went to LA, went to the Grammy Awards. It was the best one. It's the one when J-Lo wore that green Versace dress down the red carpet with P. Diddy. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Christina Aguilera won for Best New Artist. I came back, told about my experience on the radio. The program director was so impressed. He says, you need to work here. Really? And I turned them down three times because I loved the work I was doing. I worked for a divorce attorney. I had the best job because I got to greet people as they came in, got to go to the courthouse, make my rounds, and have the gift of gab to talk to everyone. So I didn't want to leave that job. But you needed to share your gift of gab with the public. I know. So I wound up taking a job at the radio station. And like they say, the rest is history. It landed <laughs> me in Phoenix. I started working at Power 92, which is now Power 98. Uh -huh. Then from there, I went to KTAR, did sports radio, did a lot of stuff in traffic traffic, video content, voice work, and then I was a traffic anchor at iHeart, and then I just started doing some freelance projects with 15, then wound up on Channel 7. <laughs> <laughs> Channel 7, but you've since then left Channel 7, and yes. now you do your own thing. So you basically have a show on YouTube. Yes. It's Community Link AZ, right? Yep, Community Link AZ, and it's my way of linking people in the community together as a resource to people, products, and services in their own backyard they might not know of. Okay. And it's a great platform because it opened the door for me to get to know a lot of the nonprofits in the community, the work they're doing, and how you can utilize their services, go volunteer help out, maybe even donate, but just be there for these individuals who I like to say are the backbone of our community because they're giving and doing so much to help mm -hmm. other people. So yeah. it's wonderful. And there's a lot of free resources yes. in our community that people don't know about. They don't. So And free classes, which maybe mm -hmm. I might be teaching some free classes I too. You never I'm know. happy to help you with that. Yes. We need more of Daphne <laughs> out need, on these streets. <laughs> and we need more of you when Thanks. it comes to positivity for oh, sure. I love Which it. I want to talk about that also. So Danielle, besides, okay, so so now you're basically doing mm -hmm. freelance, and you also do some work for STN TV too. Yes, yeah, the social television network uh -huh. downtown, and it's um, it's just right up my alley because they do yep. stuff in the community. It's full of positivity, and they've got individuals who are just there to really utilize the resources that we all have to offer and come together in a collaborative way. So it's a beautiful fitting for me. So I help them out there and I do a lot of the in-studio and community engagement as the new individuals come into the studio, welcome them, let them know what's going to happen. Because some people have never been to a television station. I know, I've been to a live taping and that's how it's I reconnected fun. with you, which yes, is great. It's so much fun. And you did a really good job. You Thanks. have such great energy. So, um, so, so that's it with your career. So you're a woman of many hats. You're yes. self-employed and you make it work and I love that. Thanks. I love me and being friends with women who are smart about making smart life decisions mm -hmm. and also who are frugal and know how to manage their own money. Yes. <laughs> got to stretch that dollar. And I love getting a good deal because I don't like to spend any money. I'm so frugal, inexpensive, cheap, budget diva, whatever you want to call it. Yes. So let me ask you a question. I'm putting you on the spot here and if you can't answer it, it's okay. But give me, like in the past month, a deal that you got that you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I got this deal. 
Okay, so I am someone who loves thrift stores, secondhand okay. shops, so good willing. So I have this thing where I go to the Goodwill either on Tuesdays or Thursdays. Okay. So Tuesdays, you can get additional 25% off because if you're a <coughs> senior over 55, <laughs> you get that additional 25% <laughs> off. You just give and away your age. So, and on Thursday, the color tag is $2.00. But if you look for the color tag that was the week before, that also is $2. So oh, you're really? looking now for two tags. Oh. Yes. So whatever the color is that week, during the week, it's 50% off. Okay. Unless you get to Thursday, then it's $2. Okay. The week before automatically becomes $2. So if the tag that was on sale the prior week mm -hmm. is still there, it's just $2. It's just $2. Oh my God. Okay. And then, so you're looking for two colors. And so with that, I always tend to find, I'm telling you, people give away the best stuff. They I have do. gotten more beautiful dresses from Banana Republic, Michael Kors, Ann Taylor, skirts that are lined, handbags, shoes, because people give away the best stuff. And then what you do is you just kind of look and see and you look at these color tags and you make it a strategic move. And if you get it on Tuesday, you not only get the discount, but your whole purchase, you get that additional 25% off. Wow. That's a great deal. It is. So, you know, I used to shop at Goodwill all the time, mm -hmm. especially when my daughter was young. But I'm going to tell you, there was a day I was like, this is ridiculous. They had some junk t-shirt mm -hmm. for like $12. And that's they when I was like, I'm done. Prices. They have raised their prices, which is horrible. But that's the thrill of the hunt for me. I get right. to go on this, you know, sort of like scavenger hunt. And it's a game you have to play. Sometimes, you you know, you find something and it's like, uh not on sale, it's not the color tag, it's not worth it. And for me, any article of clothing I buy, it's $10 or less. Right. Because I'm not going to spend more than that. So usually if it's $10, I'm making sure it's the color tag so I can get it half off. I love it. Or it's the $2 because it's the one before. I'm not going to spend the money because first of all, it's somebody else's garment that they've already worn that they've donated. Mm -hmm. And That's second right. of all, you really got to look it over. And third, it's not even worth spending all that money because you can find it at either another secondhand store or you just don't need it. Right. So that's sort of the thrill of the hunt for me. Right. It. And it's so much fun, especially when you find something. Like I found these really nice Michael Kors pinstriped dresses that okay. were fully lined. Oh, yeah. They won at twelve ninety nine for that's them. A good, but that's a good, that's a screaming deal at twelve ninety nine. It was the color tag of the week before, so it was $2. <sighs> yes! And when you get something like that, and I drive past the Banana Republic store, it's like, why? <laughs> why? When I just scored, then you go home, and the fun for me is putting my accessories with it, figuring out what shoes, what yeah. handbag's going to go to make it my own. Well, and then it comes alive. Well, you're always really stylish. Oh, I mean, well, you thanks. are very good about accessorizing yourself. I love with it. the earrings, the neck, like you mm -hmm. always, and then you always have these cute little dresses on that are just a little bit above your knees. I love my yeah. little dresses. I love I've been like trying to show off these legs and I'm gonna be hiking camel back for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's the other thing. You have a great Instagram page. Oh my god. One of the things that has attracted me to Danielle and wanting to really bring her on the show is number one is I really like her, so this is oh, my way of getting so to be sweet. friends with I people. Love you too. Right? <laughs> but not only that, you are such a positive human. And I wanna I wanna talk a little bit about okay. this. And if, if I'm if I'm digging too much, just 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 hold me up because I don't want to get too personal no, with your personal no, it's life. Good. But not everybody knows that you had stage four lung cancer, right. which was huge. And I don't want to define that mm -hmm. by you um, because there's so many more other aspects, but you're so flipping positive. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a very negative person in some ways and I come off mm -hmm. very positive and very friendly, mm -hmm. but I can get really heavy because it's hard for me. And this is what I want to understand. Mm -hmm. You had stage four lung cancer. Right. If, if the shoes were reversed, it would be like, woe is me, woe is me. And then I'd have to like do this whole thing on social media about uh, stage four cancer. Mm -hmm. How am I going to get through this? Right. You know, looking for empathy, which is, which is fine. You know, mm -hmm. the humans do that way. But for me, it's like, I, I prefer your way of doing things <laughs> because you're so positive. And if any of you are tuning in to watch this podcast, if you look or maybe just go follow Danielle, mm -hmm. she is a very healthy woman. Yeah, I <laughs> this try. is not yes. a woman that you would think <laughs> had to had to battle stage four lung cancer. Mm -hmm. And she did. And she's still battling it it's to this crazy. day. There's still a little bit it of trace crazy. of that cancer in there. It's so. insane. That's what I tell people. You know, I've always taken care of myself. I enjoy being out in nature. I love hiking. I love walking. And I've never been someone who's acquired a taste for alcohol, so I don't drink alcohol, nor coffee. Never smoked, but was losing weight, back started hurting like crazy, wound up dropping down to 94 pounds, and diagnosed with stage four lung cancer, spreading to my lower spine, pelvis, and shoulder. Unbelievable. Insane. So 
in the beginning, like when you first initially hear it, it's a shock to the system. So I was trying to wrap my brain around it. Yeah, because I'm sure your brain couldn't even comprehend no, that. No. Because you're a perfectly healthy woman. It's like, what is going on? This can't be what I have. Because I thought I had arthritis or a bone disease. So just trying to come to grips with it was a challenge. But I'm the type of person that I love to keep things moving. So I know that the sun is going to rise the next day. It's going to set. It's going to be a new opportunity for something. So I had to figure out how to apply this to okay. this journey. Pause. I want to pause because that's a significant thing that you just said. Because mm-hmm. I, I want to listen because I'm somebody who thinks negatively. <laughs> so when you were dealt a very, mm-hmm. like almost your brain couldn't get around it, such a negative thing mm-hmm. that you're sitting here thinking about, I know the sun's going to rise tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And that's what keeps you on a positive path. Right. I just want to... Because I'm really listening to what no, you're saying. So sorry, I didn't mean so to interrupt true. you. No, okay. it's so true. And so I gave myself two days. The first day, lots of crying, trying to figure out. The second day, I woke up early. I was in a lot of pain. I went into the bathroom, and I looked at myself completely naked. I was so thin, sick, frail. My skin was hanging off of me, just like if someone had lost an enormous amount of weight. And, and you were not that big I, of a person. No, it was with. crazy. Yeah. And so I said, I need to hear myself say it. And I just started yelling, I have stage for lung cancer. I have freaking so stage for young lung cancer. And I said it over and over in different ways. I yelled it. I screamed it. I started crying again. Then I said, I need to let my family know. I called my mom, let her know. Called my brother, called my dad. We had tears on the phone. The next day after that, I mentally came to grips and I said, I have got to go to work. I am going to be in for the hardest fight of my life, but I have got to go to work. I said, there is no reason why someone like me who is taking care of myself and doing everything right should get stage four lung cancer. I have to have gotten this for a reason. There's got to be a blessing on the other side of this that is going to teach me a lesson Mm -hmm. and give me a purpose for my life. So that's it. You're still putting a positive spin yes, on this. I had like to still, tell myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had to speak it out. I had to hear myself say it because I wanted to flip the script. And then I called my doctor and I said, listen, I am going to kill my cancer with kindness. That is my mission. I said, it's going to be the hardest thing I've ever done, but I'm ready for it. So whatever you tell me I need to do, I'm going to do it from the treatment, the medicine, but I'm going to fight to make sure that my life is still living in a way that I'm living my life. Because I didn't feel like I was going to die. I didn't feel like I was going to die. I didn't feel like it was my time. I said, I still have a lot of life to live. Plus, I had just ordered some new wigs on Amazon. <laughs> and they needed to come and be delivered. I said, I got to wear these wigs. You're like, so perfect like, timing. <laughs> I'm about to lose my hair. It was just crazy. I love that. That's another mm-hmm. saying. So I'm going to kill the cancer with kindness. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm My going doctor to was kill like, the cancer with kindness. And I remember after months of like doing biopsies, receiving radiation, family coming out, being sick and weak, I just started sharing every aspect of it on social media through Facebook Live, through Instagram Live videos. And I just started naming things. And I think that this was a part of me not only just embracing it, but also showing a different side. So for anybody else that was going through it, they could say, man, somebody's got cancer. My day's not that bad. Look at how she's handling it. And it would be a source of inspiration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, I remembered when I was on radio and I had a tumor on my uterus. We made so much fun of that tumor, and it was the best outcome. We named it T-Bone the Tumor. We created a song for it. We had the doctor who was doing the surgery on the radio with us, and he gave us assurance of what this operation was going to look like. And it made me feel so good because then people were calling in, I had a tumor too, Danielle, and I didn't have to have the surgery, but you're going to be just fine. And it opened a door conversation and made this daunting procedure seem lightweight, right. doable, and acceptable. And that's how you stay so positive. So that's how I kept with the whole yeah. momentum. I said, I'm going to do the same thing with my cancer. Okay. And it just worked out. And it was the best thing that's ever happened to me. You're amazing. <laughs> I, I mean, listen, I know, you know, people get cancer and they get mm-hmm. sick and things like that. But it's like, 
you know, it really is. It's like it's it's how you choose yeah. to take it in. Mm -hmm. Now you you can't help what the future is going to hold. If no. you've got some cells, and mm -hmm. I mean, but you've done everything right. within your power mm -hmm. to fight this. Yeah. And I believe that you have a lot more to do on this earth. Yes, I feel the same way, and I feel like I have a lot of living to do. And it's been a whirlwind, but it's been the best thing that's happened to me because one, it connected me to other women who, like myself, physically fit, working out got stage four lung cancer or got some type of lung disease for no reason. Then it connected me in a way that I was able to share on platforms to bring hope, inspiration, and the realness of this in mm -hmm. front of people who have never seen anybody. Okay, share. sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I accidentally hit the wrong button. So we're back at you. So, okay, let me make sure we're recording now. Okay, <laughs> so Danielle, we were talking about your cancer journey mm -hmm. and positivity, and I ended with, you know, absolutely, I agree with you that you, yeah. know, you still have more to do. But my question to you is now, so do you think you discovered the reason why you may have gotten stage four lung cancer? Or I, like for you? Yeah, it's, it's a combination of things. I think the, a lot of the things that I have been doing over the years and sort of manifesting as time goes on through working different jobs and doing things in the community, it was my way of, one... I've always wanted to have my own talk show, so now I have that on YouTube with Community Link AZ. Mm -hmm. And then two, just to connect with people in a more profound way, because I always believe that we are all connected through our stories, and we all have unique stories, but how do you touch someone with your story and share the things you've gone through or even connect in a way that helps them see things in a different light? So the cancer has totally opened the door to me to make a connection, because... Everybody knows someone who's been touched by cancer in some way, shape, or form. So it's a conversation starter. It's a great platform to have. And it's an opportunity to really help someone, especially if they're going through a hard time. Because nobody wants to hear those words from your doctor. Oh, we God. found cancer. You have cancer. Where do you go from here? Because nobody wants to stop living, especially if things are going well in their life, or even have to go through the challenges that it brings medically, financially, mentally, emotionally, because you really do need a support system, and you need to have a good sense of who you are mentally and physically to push through this and to remain sort of your own fortitude to get you through it. And it's not easy. It's not. But it is something that, you know, is doable. But that's what I feel like it, that was my purpose because I met so many amazing people from all over. Right. And well, that's and our it, connector. It made me reach out to you because I mm -hmm. was like, okay, I really want to get to know this woman, Danielle. Mm -hmm. She's so positive. Danielle, you're one of the most positive I know, people in my life right now. <laughs> and I need that. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that you're here. Well, I'm thank so you. That you had a positive spin. And mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that you were listening to your insiders saying, uh -huh. yeah. This is not yeah. my time. Yeah. And I have a lot more to do. So I, I appreciate that. Okay, I'm going to bring somebody in. Diane, where are you? Diva. Diane. So let me tell Diva you. Diane. Diane, come on. I'm bringing you in the show. Come here. Really? This is Diane. Yeah. <laughs> this is Diane, Diane Brennan. I haven't done my hair. Right here. She's okay. like, what's going on? This is Diane Brennan, who basically mm -hmm. have brought a lot of the women that I've had on my show. Yeah. On my show. Mm -hmm. Because this is one woman where you want to be her friend. Mm -hmm. She has your back. She was there for her when she had I know. Cancer. I tell people all the time, she's more than a friend. She's family. She was my bulldog talking right? to my doctor. Remember? Right. You yes. yelling at Dr. Right. Kukanar. She, she has stopped. What's the only word? She's passionate. Okay. <laughs> you also help me with my podcast. And you mm -hmm. help me with anything. You help me with real estate and everything. So, mm -hmm. Diane, you are one woman that is a good friend. So, if anyone's looking for a friend, Diane Brennan is a good oh, friend. There you go. No, no, okay. <laughs> so, I'm going to wrap up the show. <laughs> So, Danielle, thanks for coming. Yes, in no, and thanks for having me. To chat with me. I mm -hmm. really appreciate it. I no, it's really, good. So, it's you good. guys can, if you want to check out Danielle mm -hmm. Woods, she's a comedian also, which we didn't really highlight a lot, but she does a <laughs> lot of local comedian shows. Mm -hmm. And you can watch all of her stuff on her Facebook page, on her Instagram. It's all Danielle Williams, right? It's um, no, Instagram is one and only Diva Danielle, because everybody calls me Diva Danielle. Yes. So, it's the number one. One and only Diva Danielle. Right. And you can catch her on YouTube at Community Link AZ. Just yep. put that in the search bar. That'll mm -hmm. come up. And I'll have all the information posted on my blog at SmartShopperDaphne.com. And don't forget, mm -hmm. I'm Daphne Monroe, your Smart Shopper. Have a great week.